I'm Sophia Cassiola. And I'm Michael J. Epstein. And you're watching Without, Without Your, Your Head. Head. <laughs> Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by the fine people here of sight of uh, Parasite Trauma, which we just watched. I should know the name. It's hard to say though. It is. There's a lot of peas there. Parasite Trauma, but I, I like the name, and it's good to have all you guys back. All right, so we have Sam Mason Bell here. Hello. Hello, Simon Barry. Hi. And Jessica Hunt. <laughs> Good to have everyone here. So yeah, that was fun to get to watch a movie with everybody. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, sorry for the, for the weird intro here. We had some technical problems, but it's all working now. And I'll edit all that out and no one will know afterwards. <laughs> Except for this part, because I'll leave this part. <laughs> but you did say that you thought this was a, 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 a cursed movie. So maybe this was part of the curse. Yeah, like when you start saying lightning and then technical difficulties, this film has been a nightmare from beginning to end. So, yeah, I think it's messing around with your boards. It's just going to get you some really annoying curves. It's not full on life changing stuff, it's just annoying stuff. Yeah, well, that, that's not, <laughs> yeah, you can live with that. They're annoying, a slightly annoying uh, Ouija board is a lot better than uh, the, the death, the deadly uh, Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Had any of you used a Ouija board before the movie? You never used one before? No, I was not like Yeah, that. I did a teenager, yeah. It's the old paper version, get your glass and draw oh, the really? alphabet. And oh, really? Our cat wants to, to join the, the chat. I a lot to say. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Like, An animal always yeah. pops up on the show. He, I asked him to bring the parakeet, but uh, but apparently parakeet oh. is, uh, does not <laughs> like people. That, that's oh, crazy. Wait, that, that's crazy. Oh yeah, we've got the other uh, actors. Oh. Patch was in the film as well. Remember, she was superb in the film. In the in Simon's film, he does not like to help out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm a star now, don't you know? Yeah, I should have got. I do have a Ouija. I actually might be able to grab it. I have a Ouija board here. It's in a bag. It might be dusty, so I apologize. Nice. Our light started to flicker as you brought the Ouija board out. Oh, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should put it away, but... Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe it's best. Had you unboxed it? <laughs> I should put it away. Okay. Uh, the old... I always... You know, this is like made by Milton Bradley or something, so like how... Yeah. how... It's a weird one how it's got like the almost um, urban legend attitude with it, where it is just, yeah, it's a mass corporation capitalist toy. But yeah, because I don't think you can even use the oh, name yeah. unless you, you give like uh, Milton Bradley some right. Uh, pay, uh, uh, Parker Brothers, I'm sorry, Parker Brothers. Well, I hope that's not true because uh, <laughs> we're, we're in <laughs> <laughs> No one watches this, so no one will know from here, you know. I don't know that information. That's the best way to So you said it was a cursed movie. So, like, how long ago did you start to make it? Um, well, originally I had the concept in 2012. But I thought, like, basically, I thought, what would it be like to actually do it for real as a psychology experiment? And to film it, to document it, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be the participant. I'll do the ritual, just film myself and see what happens. And quickly I was like, that's really unethical. You can't do that. Just in case anything happens. <laughs> or if nothing <laughs> happens, yeah. So, so I just, on camera. <laughs> so like, yeah. I that's what I, that's my that's what I would think. If something bad happens, at least it's on camera. That was why I was thinking. That's why I thought I'd be the participant because I thought well, if anything happens to me, I'm the one documenting it. You know, it's mm -hmm. part of it. But then you have to have you have to have someone to take the footage and edit it and put it on yeah, YouTube or, or sell it or something. But we have survivor. Right, right. <laughs> right. You need a will. <laughs> that that <laughs> we went through so many different like casts and directors. It's just every time we were going ready to shoot, something went wrong, and it was just like, like I said, minor small things like a location wasn't available, or an actor suddenly became ill, or just for four years of this tedium of just constant things going wrong. And eventually, we got people to, to stick to direction and stick to acting with it, and um, yeah. It, it, it still went wrong during the production. Like Simon had problems with his footage; just some of his footage just disappeared. It just we transferred it, and it just would not work. And 
we have lost some of the film because of that. And it's all these weird, little annoying technical errors and play, it just plays with annoyance. That's, that's just the film. Was that hard to edit then, uh, you know, to get the finished movie when you lose some of the some of the f stuff you filmed? Yeah, but it was difficult to edit, but once, like, because, again, we, we had a similar creative team for most of the films, so for some of them, either uh, Jackson was crewing some of them, or I was crewing some of them, some of them. So I was working close to the director, so we kind of got an idea of how it's going to come together. It's just, yeah, for some reason, it just had so many problems with the program. And when I was editing it midway through, the program just stopped working for about two months. And then I, that was during when the lockdown happened. So I was like, how am I going to finish this film? But the program won't open anymore. And eventually it fixed. There's all those annoying things that will work, but not immediately. But, and we also decided to shoot the film on um, phones instead of shooting. Originally it was all shot on DSLRs when we did the first one, because uh, Jackson's first one was actually shooting in 2018. They were so sporadically shot. It was just a question of, there was no budget at this film whatsoever, really. And uh, even Martin's part was like shot out of Portsmouth as well because he had his own contained crew. It was just a bit of a nightmare to put together. We wanted to feel so self-contained and it felt like one narrative for us rather than an anthology in traditional sense. So we knew it was going to be a lot, of a lot more work. To do. Yeah, because I kind of brought right. that up in the chat was you, we see a lot of short uh, anthologies today where it's clear that it's made by a bunch of different people. Uh, that may not even made them to be part of, you know, anthology. They just made a bunch of shorts and people kind of collected them to, and put them together for an anthology, which is fine. But, uh, but this feels, you know, obviously these are all connected. And so when you do have different directors, um, what, what do you do to make sure like they seem like they're in the same universe without, you know, I guess interfering too much? I suppose, like, you know, well, we're, we're passing and getting everything scared, but these are all actors who we know can do good. We know they can do good stuff because they've acted in our other films. So, like, and I knew, for, for instance, with um, Jess and uh, Chris Mills in the first story, they had been doing a um, streaming music show called Stream Now Music Television. So they already had that chemistry. So we knew, like, and these guys, they were the first actors who didn't drop out of the film. It was to stay consistent throughout the whole entire time. So when you have these people you can work closely with anyway, you can just get them to pop around and have a chat about the characters. And you need them a direction for, for each director to do what they wanted to do with directing, for people to have a well-rounded idea of who the characters were. And because it's script, script written by myself, um, with some with each story kind of like the director having their own sort of view on it, it really was kind of controlled in that regard, to so try and just keep it being like, okay, this is the same world, like I said, you know. We actually do all know each other, all the people who directed it. We, we are all friends as well. Yeah, we? yeah. We've, we've all worked, uh, act, acted together in different things. We've all worked together in different ways. So we actually do all know each other. And uh, you said that Jess and, uh, and the actor who uh, p played your boyfriend, that you guys do a music uh, okay. show together, which yeah. was clear, I think, in your musical performance. And... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see your <laughs> <laughs> Never pick up a guitar if you don't know how to play a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did an excellent job. I was, but this is the thing. Sam didn't realise that I actually have like a, a full-on phobia of singing in front of people. So oh, really? I can't do it. I cannot. Not even in a joke. I was just like, what can I do? And then my brain was just like, no, any song. Literally any song that I could sing in my <laughs> And that was what I came up with. Uh, <laughs> I can't say it's been my proudest moment. Watch <laughs> that. But it's what we do, isn't it? We do. We do. I guess I'll look silly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said that like that's what you came up with uh, at the time, and I know from talking to Sam and, and Simon before, like uh, a lot of your guys' films are um, are improv. So was this the same way? No, this was actually the only script that wasn't improvised. Yeah, like, we, have, we have lines. Yeah, that's. Oh, okay. uh, there were some films like um, I, there was room for the actors to obviously like change the dialogue and make it fit more to them, and because each director like mine added certain sequences into his story because. Mine wanted it to appeal to more his directing side. So there was always that kind of room, but it was also like learn the lines. Okay. Learn the lines as much as you can. Uh, yeah, so like Simon came on to film, I think, like, as always, Simon came on about a week or two just before we started shooting uh, to learn 
lots and lots of lines. So his son doesn't like writing lines. Uh, yeah, Al says here um, uh, the different segments ran together seamlessly, and she was impressed. She also brought up uh, when we, when it started that she likes anthologies like this. I uh, just watched Amicus Productions Asylum from 1972 this morning. So, were there any um, like films in the past that inspired the idea? Um, oddly, like the only thing like not it didn't really inspire. I just thought, could you do an anthology in a similar way? It was Pulp Fiction, when you go back to the first character that you start with at the end. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like it was just. If you're documenting these people, then you know, there's five cases. Like, I love Down Fish, I love Doki Horror, but yeah, there was no direct thing that was inspired in that sense. It was just like coming to the story in this way. And Simon said you guys are all friends. So I, I've talked to Simon and Sam before, but uh, uh, Jessica, how did you get involved in Trash Arts? Uh, years ago now, really. So um, I started acting in, um, it was a very short sort of active sort of position um, but it was Angel Decay and um, yes I had a great time doing that sort of helped with the script and then then I had like the lead in, in the role in the, in the short and um, yeah so it started there and then uh, then we sort of co-wrote Lonely Hearts yeah. and that was the big one for us really and for me as a writer, film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch it <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, I have not seen it. Yeah, watch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Do most of you? Uh, I know Sam not, not does it do a lot of acting. I know he said like almost cameos and a lot of stuff. But do most of you do both acting and on the um, on the creative side? Well, this was Simon's first ever film. Oh, really? Directing. Okay. Like, acting, directing. Acting. Yeah. Never Directing's hard. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've acted since I was like twelve years old. Wasn't it? So that, I'm used to it. And directing is completely different. Being in charge of other people rather than being told, what well, you just do that and you're just a body. I, I'm good at that bit because I'm used to it. But being in charge of other people is really Sorry, difficult. You're just a body. <laughs> yeah, I am. But well, you are when you're an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Director Sam tells me what to do and I do it. <laughs> Does yeah, it give you a different? Actual, does it give you a different look now? A, 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 you know, a, a different uh, appreciation of Sam, I guess, when he's doing that. <laughs> well, well, we live in hope now. We live in hope. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'd um, I'd sort of done more directing on theatre and plays and things like that. So for me to actually start directing, um, oh, and TV, and um, so then to translate that into film, that was my first sort of film piece to co-write and co-direct. That was really cool. Yeah. And, then, and then we did another feature following that. Um, well, yeah. yeah, which I was in as well as acting in. In fact, so was Sam. Yeah, and then Neil had the screen before us. Was it March? The uh, watch Piper? Yeah, it was one of our first things we, we, we did. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, you were going to be there, but you were sick at the time. Yeah. Or you just didn't want to talk to me, which is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Guess well, you'll be a sick next time this happens. Yeah, that you thought. It will all be sick next time. <laughs> hey, we're living in sick times. That's very true. <laughs> what, what was it like? Uh, I don't want to give away the movie, though we just watch it. But what was it like uh, filming the ending of your segment where, you know, you're being like controlled by an entity? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it, it's hard to say whether it looks good or not. But it, at the time, like, you're in your head and you're like, okay, so imagine someone's strangling you. And imagine someone's launching you backwards. Obviously, you take the risk. You don't know if you're going to fall. That's about as excited as it gets, really. But <laughs> it works. Though. You're like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the risk. You're like, what my back? No, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Was there, was there any thought like uh, which segment goes first and second and third and so forth? Yeah, actually, well, but the way we wrote it is not the way the final edit came out. We read. I had like rough cuts in the film for a good couple of years. We were watching it and trying to work out the best structure for it. Originally, um, Simon's bit was right at the end, just before the last story, which was always going to be Katie's. Uh, not Katie. I can't remember what the character's called. The one I directed, that one was always going to be the last one to so unity in that structure. But um, we decided that Martin's story was a little bit too heavy to have right at the beginning and to try and like bring in a bit of the horror and the Matteo story, uh, Jackson's story, sorry. 
and then go to a much calmer story of what Simon did, and then yeah, bring it back to the head and stuff. So yeah, we had to have a good couple of watches just to see, you know, what is the best structure for it, really. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Simon's wearing his millennial uh, killer shirt, and uh, I I had thought he just looks like the millennial killer like normally. <laughs> but he set me straight. He does have more hair than he does in the millennial. <laughs> I wanted to bring that up. I also like the shirt, by the way. It's very cool. It's it's cool. Hey, look at it. It's <laughs> I'm wearing my this own shirt. This is a beautiful well. painting. Yeah. I'm wearing a <laughs> It is a nice painting. I can't see it. Yeah, he's smarter oh, than me. He's, he's so you can actually see the whole shirt. I, I, I can't see my Oh, oh nice. Yeah. All right, and Jessica's wearing her own shirt, too. You were really good in Jurassic Park. I was. Uh, <laughs> she was a raptor. <laughs> so, a se- uh, seg- I don't know if you call them segment or episode, but uh, part two was with Martha. And um, uh, the actress, I thought, was, was great in that. And I-, I thought she hadn't acted anything because on IMDb, she doesn't have you know the credits. But uh, you've worked with her before. Yeah, because uh, when you said that, I was like, I better check the IMDb. And I think she has, like, split IMDb's, because oh, okay. some of the films, she's got one IMDb, and then there seems to be another IMDb. So, but yeah, Tio Tio is an amazing actress. And again, we've done a lot of short films, and she was in one of our early features, The Animals, like, in 2014. So she's someone who came from close friendly vibes, worked closely with Jackson, and again, yeah, just similar circles. We wanted to keep the cast, like, very much people that we're good friends with, just to knew that that was going to take a long time to get it to right and to make, to, to make sure the actors could be able to connect to it with chemistry. And at the same time, there were some actors that were like doing the first film, was like Katie, who played um, Rebecca, I think, the, the student. That was one of our first films working with her, the first time working with Simon and stuff. But I'd seen her in other local films and it was like, well, it's a really cool chance to get involved with something. <laughs> and in Martin's story, the lead actress, Eve Oliver, she done a lot of stuff with uh, Micro Pictures, who Martin's done a lot of work with. So it's kind of like, oh, cool, we get to them to have, get them a bit involved in some sort of way. How oh, nice. Yeah, this last year, you know, I've been doing some movie stuff, and you really see how important um, chemistry is with people. And if you find people like you like, and also that won't be headaches, I think, is a big thing, you know, that, then you want to continue to work with them. Yeah, it's, the thing is, that there is an element of friendship, and it's it's a nice it's a nice idea because you you, you all want to put in like filmmaking is not about one person; it's like everyone trying to bring their best for whatever reason, if it's for performance or if it's for cinematography, sound, whatever. But you want to be able to get along as well, so you actually feel some sort of pride towards what you do. And um, because a lot of our, our actors do live locally to us. They'll be coming around and they'll be chill and stuff. We talk about the character a bit more, and then we'll be like, oh, why don't we do this character for a different film? It's just keeping that like community vibe when it comes to filmmaking as opposed to just you're here to do a job, I'm here to do a job. To give it more, I don't know, more loving feeling to some degree when you're making nasty, horrible films. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is the parakeet is is your parakeet going to be one of the uh, the trash arts players from now on, or <laughs> oh, it, it could be well. It's a very talented parakeet. Is it another What's a parakeet's name? I just want to call it, you know Simon's Orwell. parakeet. What is it again? Orwell. Orwell. Oh, nice. Orwell. Yeah, he doesn't like people though. So I'd be <laughs> He's been rescued so many times. That's why he's ended up with me. I'm the only person to put up on it. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone knows that he Orwell was not actually being dissected at the end of the. Yeah, no, which is he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, I mean, no, we are not seeing him, but we'll take your word for <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dur- uh, during that episode, uh, Annabelle in the chat, Annabelle Electric, she wanted to know, um, which you talked about in the chat, but for people who weren't here, are any of the, uh, the rituals, spells, procedures true to actual Wiccan r- rituals? Because um, I, I like misunderstood that question at first. But it's much it's more Alistair like, Crowley than it is Wiccan. Well, the, the, I think the initial <laughs> spells, like, so we looked at like, some black magic stuff, we were trying to look at blood rituals, because we didn't want it to be... As, as was discussed, a misrepresentation of Wicca. We wanted someone who was drifting away with that because of their own life instincts. They want to go to the darker side. So we looked at some of the blood ritual stuff. Um, and I believe 
from what I remember, because it was so long ago that we wrote the film, and she was very <laughs> much involved with the film from the beginning. I think she had some uh, direction where the dialogue was going, because she wanted to make the witch seem as authentic as possible. But yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, what was actually used in the sacrifice? What was uh, what was she stabbing? <laughs> I believe, like, cause I I was not actually for Jackson's film. It was, uh, it was a towel. It was oh, a okay. towel and feathers wrapped in blood, and just yeah, like somehow it worked. It looked really. Was, I saw it because he was like, it works. It's like, no, nah, that looks like something for your steps. So it's definitely <laughs> some sort of you know something horrible is happening there, yeah, and it works. Yeah. Is that something you guys are interested in? Uh, not sacrificing, but like uh, the <laughs> black magic and stuff, because I know it was you know one of the other films we played. I think, it, yes, it's a question of right place and right time with those sort of things. And because you're exploring, like, with, with Parasite, you're exploring whether the occult as a whole. So we thought, well, there's different connections of why people would connect to Ouija boards and why not from a more religious, spiritual perspective. And in that sense, it would be more to the occult level. Um, I think... Again, like, even though we do have some occult elements in there, it's always more about the nastiness of what humanity is over what evilness and magic we have, because it's always in our hands in that regard, you know? Whereas I think the truth to well out was more my doing. Mm. Um, I had this whole uh, fascination with, with that whole occult side of things for a period of time. I um, was doing a lot of reading and was really enjoying the fact that there was all these archetypes and characters that um, I felt I hadn't had enough air time in terms of uh, the media. So I thought, oh, this is a great opportunity to create some characters based on on some of that around the camp. That's cool. Yeah, I remember at the time now, Sam said that that was like uh, something that you were interested in. When we yeah, were, yeah. Uh, talking. It's, um, it's so, sort of phased out a little bit now, more into something else, but um, cool that nature. She's forget, <laughs> pro progressed. I don't know, for, from, uh, I'm yeah, kind of afraid to ask to what now. I don't know. Right? <laughs> Nature, just love and light. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> right. well, I thought it was going down a darker path. But, no, I made it sound like that. I don't know why. I, I, I think I just couldn't think of the right words. All of a sudden, I was like, I'm just going to. I now stab bunny rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the third one's Graham, which um, uh, uh, Chris, the actor, plays Graham. Uh, the, when did you start work with him? And he's like, you just see him and you want to like the man. Yeah, yeah that's good. good. <laughs> he's, he's like a puppy dog in human form. He's, um, <laughs> basically, there's some um, Suki Jones who was in the tree for out who played um, Diana. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she she basically works on a little theatre group in Portsmouth. So sometimes now and then she'd recommend actors to me. And one of the actors was Chris. And Chris, um, he'd been in our comedy show right here, right now, and that's a couple of little cameos. We wanted to give a role with a bit more meat, and the, that particular story was added to the film much later in the script form. We didn't have that story originally. But we felt that we wanted something that had a bit more of a, I suppose like a, a more emotionally connecting story, something that was a bit sadder and wasn't just like, relationship based so it was just like one person like experiencing loneliness and connecting with the Ouija board and connecting with, well trying to connect with his daughter it just doesn't seem to get. I'm not sure it was originally meant to be quite as miserable as I made it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's actually quite a nice tone I thought. Yeah Chris, I'm not, some place. I'm not sure I'm a horror director I think I'm more of like a, a miserable director. <laughs> <laughs> The misery man. All right. Yeah. Very director. Yeah, well, I grew up in the nineties, and that's like what all the music was about at the time. It was just about feeling bad. Like a music video. All right. Yeah. yeah and that came up. With, go on. Sorry. No, sorry no, continuing with the curse is that when we were first went to film that segment, we, we got a small room to film it in, and we got the cats that have to be kept in the room. I thought, oh, great, the cat's really reactive to the, like, the movement and everything. It was really good. Chris, the actor, oh, I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> like, oh, my God, what do you mean you're allergic to cats? It's like you slowly see his eyes start to puff up as we were filming. I think, well, we need to finish this really quickly or we're going to kill him. 
Jesus, I feel bad. I feel <laughs> bad for Chris. Yeah. I feel bad for him anyway. But no, yeah, that ain't feel really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it came up. Uh, you know, Annabelle said, I really dig this story. He's so sweet. Makes me feel worried for him. And Elle said, I like this character. Unfortunately, I imagine something dreadful is going to happen to him. And uh, that really adds to the story, though, because, you know, if you don't feel something for the character, you're not really going to care so much what yeah. happens to him. But if you really like yeah. him or attached to him, you know, you don't want to see bad things happen. It made me so happy when she said that because I remember going, oh good, the story's done what it needs to do. Because by that point you kind of get, okay, this thing's going to, it's going to fuck him up somewhere. It's this horrible demon that likes to torture in different kind of ways. So when you like the person, the first character, you know something bad's going to happen. And I like that. I like that story. You're hoping by that point they're kind of tuned in to where the story's going. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and you feel you know it's a it's a downer, but you know done in a good way. Which you yeah, in this movie you do a lot of stuff with you know things you don't necessarily see on camera. Yeah, no, well the thing is, well, we, I wanted to write it like it was a drama, so each story was like two piece character drama where it was very much a relationship based thing, and it's stuck in that one location that you had to experience the characters and get to know them first and then the, the, the horror was like secondary to it um, and I think that's why like it is quite it's quite a miserable story there isn't much happiness but then demons don't yeah, really yeah. like happiness so you know it's it's, it's what what it, it's playing with evil and when you play with evil I don't feel like it's necessary to show plus I also want to show how unethical the whole experiment is as people commented like it's not a good idea. It's a terrible idea what she's doing. She should be doing it. She's already like clearly having some issues in her own life. It's a bad idea, but that's what makes good horror. It's one of the worst ideas. So let's let's film the worst idea right now and everything's gonna be fine. So Wait, which brings you very nicely to the next story. In which is the opposite because you, you hate the man so much you want something absolutely <laughs> yeah you're, you're waiting for, for him to get yeah, yeah which apart, is another part of horror too a lot of times you know you're, you're <laughs> wanting the the characters to get killed yeah <laughs> you really want them to die horribly <laughs> <laughs> they deserve to die <laughs> right and now uh, the 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 actor in that he does a very good job as you mentioned is playing a, a real wanker which is more yeah, of an English <laughs> So, uh, the, what what made you think he was right to play uh, that character? That was actually Martin's choice because Martin shot the film outside of Portsmouth. We we auditioned the main actress, um, and he was the best actress for it. But he decided to go with um, Mark Magnuson, I believe that's his name. And um, yeah, it was a real surprise to me because I just watched the film and was like, "Wow, this guy's perfect." He was exactly what was necessary. Because again, when we were going to shoot the film in Portsmouth, like. Originally, we had a whole different kind of cast, so I thought it was perfect when I was writing it. And then, yeah, like Martin just found probably the better option at the end of the day. So, no, I was really happy with, with that guy. Because he, he, like, he came across as the right kind of brutishness. And I think that's what that role needed. It needs to have that proper, like, the lad in, in, in English culture. It's unpleasantly it's believable. It was unpleasantly yeah. believable. No, and again, yeah. again uh, you really showed, you know, the uh, the horror of domestic violence in that one without um, a lot of it's off camera, which you, you just hear what's going on. And I think that's uh, a lot of times more powerful. Yeah, I was really curious how Martin was going to kind of approach it with, with that particular part of the story. Because I obviously just wrote the initial script and saw that that's where the story goes. And then he adapted it to how he wanted it to go. And um, yeah, I could tell it was something my knew he had to be sensitive with it and to make sure it was the right actions and not to be too stereotypical and archetypal and, and not too like i suppose too dramatic to the point where it just becomes unbelievable and you're just sort of drawn into almost melodrama i i think you've got a nice balance of being able to steer away from that hopefully others will agree we'll see yeah. Uh, oh, I have your quote here. Simon said, this guy plays a total wanker really well. Is the, is I'm a wise man, Neil. I'm a wise man. <laughs> you are a wise man. <laughs> You're a very quotable man. Simon said. So I go on the box of the, the cover. This guy plays a total wanker. <laughs> really well. Yeah. Uh, Vic says, uh, justice is a great theme in horror. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, he was, uh, during the thing, he said he was hoping for a ghost or demon or whatever uh, to do horrible things to him. Uh, and Annabelle says uh, it was uh, really uh, good uh, makeup effects for the bruising on his back. Yeah, we got um, Kay Johnson, who did um, does pretty much most of the makeup for most of what I'm the HV films and what mine does. And also, recently we worked with her a lot, and she always kind of like... She's fantastically good. Yeah, you give her something she wants to dive into, and she'll dive into it and give everything you need for it. And I think um, a lot of the other stories, we didn't want to make them too like, heavy on the makeup and on special effects, but this story needed it. So it's kind of nice that that one kind of goes more into the actual scene violence and seeing the boozy and stuff like that, whereas the other story is kind of a bit more psychological. I mean, the first story has its borderline sexual elements. The first story, to me, is the most lighter story because it's kind of silly. And it's like, you think, because all the attention is being put onto Jess's character, and Chris's character is still a bit of a laugh, I thought it was a bit, you know, darkly comical that he's the one who gets horribly abused by the demon at the end of that story. Maybe I don't know if I that kind of fun. It's only because everyone assumed, oh, it's going to be coming towards your character. But instead, you get sick. Yeah, definitely. And then, it, like you said, uh, if you have something that's a more, little more lighthearted, I think it makes the uh, the horror of the rest of the story you know, stand out more. I think it's also a weird thing when you write something. Like, I know that Jackson finds his story kind of amusing too, because he sees the, the character that she eventually sacrifices. It's called Karen. Which we didn't realize when we wrote it, but obviously, you know, Karen's got his own uh, meanings nowadays. Um, yeah, no, he just finds the humor and just how, like, how much she hates her. It's this weird sort of battle that they have between each other. And yeah, as, as the creator just finds, we'll, we'll, you watch a story that's dark enough enough time, you're going to laugh at it a few times because you've just seen it too much and you can't be sensitized to it. So there's some dark humor running under it, whether anyone would agree. I'd say there are moments where you go, it's kind of funny, maybe. Right. right, yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking to a nasty Neil, so I find <laughs> him a lot of bizarre things. <laughs> Yeah, so you're really like, lovely, Neil. Yeah. Thank you're you. Really I do. Lovely. I do get that a lot. That people you're say, not nasty at like, why, all. "Why are you nasty?" Well, I appreciate that. It's better than if they would just say, "Well, clearly, I know why you're called nasty, Neil." Then, yeah. and then I'd probably have to worry. I guess. <laughs> it's been suggested to change it to other names, but it, they never roll off the tongue. Like, <laughs> yeah, never, right, yeah. Annabelle yeah, suggested Sweet yeah, Neil, and I was like, that's nice, but I can't be do a horror show and be like, hey, I'm Sweet uh, Neil. Sweet Neil. No, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, and so the uh, the final uh, the story is really about uh, the person who's, you know, kind of starting all of this. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I wanted to do that whole fiction thing of going back to her because it's really – She's the one who put experiments together, and by being like fully part of it, it, it brings the whole story around quite nicely. And again, you assume from the beginning, oh, she, we don't know anything about her, we don't know what her emotional state was when she's going into it. <laughs> and because, like, because it's one of those things where you're just getting a month of someone's life, you don't necessarily know anything before or after that time. So they will have other things going on in their lives and other kind of concerns. And we wanted to play with that, that idea that she clearly come from something that pushed her into such a, a direction of science that even any of us ludicrous to her immediately. But clearly there's, there's like fractures within that with, with her having a more religious family background. So it's always that kind of clash. Because it's a horror film, it's obviously the paranormal is going to win over from the science. And it's kind of nice to have her crumbling quite quickly. And then... One thing I kind of noticed is that apart from Chris Wren's character, most of the male characters are very much toxic and dickheads, basically. And uh, Simon plays a good dickhead. Would play uh, uh, well, I was going to say, I play a, uh, I'm a right dick in that one. He's a, <laughs> he's a right knob in there. <laughs> you don't realise how like much of a dickhead the men are until you watch it back and you're like, oh, oh he's harsh. He's nice, actually. He's harsh. Not, not <laughs> he's a dreadful person. <laughs> He tries to be an intellect. I wanted him to come across like he thinks he's an intellect. He thinks he's better than all of this. But really, he's just a drunk. A drunk he's not very nice at all. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like a, like a good guy in reality. You could be Sweet Simon. That rolls off the tongue. <laughs> you know. yeah, 
Oh, oh stop it now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> is that yeah. fun to play uh, to play the dick in the in the movie? Oh, it's, my, it's always more fun to play than someone who's kind of a bit edgy. Do you want that kind of edge? Right? You can get into it, and it, it gives you that way into the character but quite easily. No one wants to sit around. You don't want to be the nice guy all the time. Do you? <laughs> no much. Not fun. <laughs> yeah. We have so, uh, go on, Stephen sorry. Longhurst in as well um, to play the dad. And Stephen Longhurst did films with Michael J. Murphy, who's a possible filmmaker for like 30 years back. So he's been making films in, in this city that have like, been gone around the world, the whole video nasty movie in the 80s. So it's really cool to have him cameo in it. Um, because he brings that, you know, he's, he's just got that creepiness to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a person, the person is not creepy at all, so he's very funny, but that, when he's acting, he can bring in that creepiness immediately, and probably because he's been 30 years of creepiness, I guess. Yeah. It was really good to see that, um, that someone noticed that he was at the window, that, that yeah, scene. We were really worried that people wouldn't notice. Well, right. Yeah, I, I did notice the first time, and I... You know, then later on I noticed that it wasn't. But when I first noticed, I was like, is that a crew member that we're not supposed okay. to see? <laughs> I'm glad he wasn't, because he no, was a creepy was looking guy out the window. Yeah, I was like, that was a creepy, uh, creepy crew man. What's going on? <laughs> but no, yeah, and I was, I was happy too that they noticed that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you guys played at the uh, America House, I think, is the name of the festival. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that what it's called? Because I always call it Hoots. The Hoots doesn't sound right. Very you're good. probably <laughs> correct. I, but I think I've got it wrong. I think I've got it horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played uh, last week. Um, unfortunately, it was like two thirty a.m., so I don't know how it went down. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. And so it's literally the start of like sending out festivals. Obviously, most are online, but we're going to hope to get it out there a bit more, and then it'll be down for release next year. You know, obviously, how does that affect you guys? Because you guys, you know, a lot of your stuff plays at festivals normally, and it's a strange world at the moment. And it's a weird one because obviously we, we can't always get to the festivals, even by the That's ones true. in the UK. Sometimes the fun is just aren't there to just go, right, let's all just travel to this place and afford to go here and afford to go there. So, in some ways, what fires and online festivals, at least you know they're happening. We've got to embrace the online stuff, haven't we? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, don't get cursed. <laughs> Sorry, it's, <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we'll have it on camera if anything bad happens. <laughs> you have to realize we're live. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I like that he says sorry and he just stays there. But. I'm the average it's, it's an open door <laughs> policy. My is our trash house. He's um, made some, some trip. He's in quite a few films. So. People just wander in and out. <laughs> yeah, he's on the beach. He was in sex I, I just... That's him. That's him. That's oh, that's him. him. All right, very I cool. Usually, I usually just turn up. <laughs> that's how that's how you got in the movie. You just walked yeah, in yeah, and you're like, hey, get over out. here. Yeah. <laughs> I, if well, you the cats, I own the cats. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> He's the cat wrangler. <laughs> I'm the cat man. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's a real specialist cat handler. <laughs> so the rebranding to stash arts didn't last long. You lost a mustache. <laughs> no, I. I I genuinely thought I had a face for a massage, but I don't. No, so I just thought that. Like, oh, so yeah, like, oh and the smile, you know, if you wouldn't try. Yeah, it just didn't work. It just made my, fat, made my face feel really fat. And then I had kind of thought, like, I look like... I think I don't think a mustache works for very many people. I think it's probably yeah. more the minority. Oh, yeah, I felt like works. a really heavy characterized... Yeah, yeah like a yeah. like a big handlebar mustache or something. No. Yeah, Maybe really if you're drawing waters, really it might work, but like a pencil yeah. mustache. But I think you made the right choice, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it looked better with the goatee, so honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, where does um, where does the movie go from here? Paris, para psych trauma. It's not easy to say. It is not easy. To say. Plus, I'm not very smart. So. It should be coming out from uh, Dark Side releasing next year. Oh, okay, um, cool. They have a firm date, right, for the industry, um, 
well, they haven't announced when they're back to open yet, but we're hoping to have it out with them next year. And yeah, like, hopefully this stuff might just continue on a festival circle and just get out there to a few places, really. And uh, yes, and that will probably reach out to some reviewers soon as well and see if we can get some reviews out for it. Uh, Bob in the chat here says, uh, how's, how's the senseless shoot going uh, during this time? Senseless went awesome. Uh, we, we had the shoot two weeks ago. It was a five-day shoot. Um, it was a heavy shoot. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice experience for Ryan. <laughs> Ryan had to be like, buried alive. And I just and felt like I, I should peer my head back in there. No, <laughs> that, was, that was not fun. It was not a fun shoot for I, Ryan. I swore at Sam a lot. It was night time as well, and it was dark, and it was cold, and, and there was bugs nice all over bugs. me. There's a lot of bugs. Oh, oh bugs. bugs. I don't there's mind the cold bugs. and the dark too much. The bugs, I'm not a big fan of. <laughs> hey, tell me about it. <laughs> it's, it's England. They're only like wood lice. They're not dangerous. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Simon, why don't you go and do it then? Yeah, yeah. Should we, should we stop? I had a good time in London when I was out. Uh, everyone told me the food was bad, but uh, I, I don't think I had a bad meal when I was in London. I always have negative attitude British food. I mean, you should go to Ireland. Ireland has lovely food. Oh. <laughs> From the Irish person. Yeah. Potatoes. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, you should definitely come down to Portsmouth, though. Like you said before, if you want to get involved with, um, if you want to come down with Cameo. Or... Yeah, yeah, I would love to. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I can't right now. They they, they they won't let me there because I'm an American. But <laughs> there's a lot of uh, idiots here in the country at the moment. <laughs> we we sympathise with you. We got a few here, mate. Honestly, you're not alone. We got a few here too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't drink anymore though, so I won't be going to the pubs. Last time I was there, I was a heavy drinker. But. It's uh, still not the safest idea to go to pubs anyway. Might as well just that's that's very true. Yeah. Nice yeah. So, uh, it's senseless. Uh, by the way, do you guys uh, sell the shirts anywhere? Um, yes. I don't know where. But, uh, <laughs> very good salesman, Sam. <laughs> if I, if I would say he would tell us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe you can get him on the Indiegogo site. I think still, I think he's still does someone there. I'll find out and send the link on. It's on the internet, mate. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of that thing, the internet. I, I think yeah, it might yeah. just be a fad that these kids are into. We'll find out. We'll see if it has any staying power. <laughs> and uh, where can people follow Trash Arts or any of you? You can uh, check out our website, trasharts.co.uk, which gives you kind of a link to all of uh, our older work. And, um, We're all on there. Yeah, and the uh, YouTube channel, Trash Arts Portsmouth, Facebook, Trash Arts UK, I think that's the same for Instagram, and Twitter is Trash Arts Film. Slash Trash Arts, obviously. Just, just as well. Oh, yeah, so um, on Facebook, you just search my name, Jessica Hunt. Not uh, the right word, but um, you'll find me. And um, yeah, on, <laughs> on Instagram, you will look for uh, Creative Oddballer, and that's me. Um, I actually forget what my Twitter handle is. I'm very rarely on it. But, um, I'm not a fan of the Twitter either. I know. Uh, uh, I like, especially, cl clearly when I call it the Twitter. The, yeah, right. I'm literally just, I'll scroll through and be like, who are these people? And then, yeah, I, don't know. Uh, I know I should use it to promote the show, but I just don't uh, enjoy being on it. So. No, no fun of it. I like it. Oh, well, so Sam's a big. F he doesn't know his own way, his where he could buy his shirts, but he's all about the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Or you can just walk in your into your place, apparently, if you want to follow you. Yeah, the doors always open. <laughs> all right. Well, this has I been just great. Walk in the back door every time I just come in and out the back gate and oh, Simon's here again yeah I'm here <laughs> you'll find me making a cup of tea <laughs> we can go for a cup of tea <laughs> well it's been great it was uh, good to talk to you guys again and good to uh, talk to you for the first time Jessica yes you too yeah, man. Good yeah. and uh, thanks again for letting us uh, show the movie and I know we'll play some more stuff for you guys down the road is it not 
Neil, it's an honour. It's an honour. Oh, <laughs> We're well. not worthy. Oh. We're not worthy, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> keep it up, keep it up. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I will talk to you guys soon. It's been great. Thank you, and thank everyone for watching. Bye bye. Love you. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye. bye. Night. I know it's late for you guys, so good night. <laughs> <laughs>